In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. What an exciting study we are beginning on the miracles of Jesus. And I must tell you, my temptation was to just rush right to the first miracle and start right down the line. But I felt definitely impressed of the Holy Spirit to spend this first week with you just laying a little foundation, giving a little framework to our study so that we will understand the miracles better and we'll appreciate them more and we'll take from them the great spiritual message God has for us today, and that is this, Christ is enough. I said it in the first study. I said it in the second and the third and the fourth. I'm saying it to you today. I'll say it again and again. Someone said that repetition is the mother of all learning. So we're going to repeat ourselves a great deal, but it's a good repetition. It's a good brainwashing. It's the truth. Christ is enough. That's the message of the miracles, the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus. I draw your attention today to something that Jesus said in John chapter 10 that I think gives us a little context to study these miracle texts found in the gospel records. Uh, The Lord is in a conversation with a group of religious people who frankly didn't believe him because they didn't want to believe him. In the end, people believe what they want to believe. In John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus said to them, Look, my works testify of who I am. Let's read just a little bit, beginning in John 10 and verse number 37. He said, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. And there he abode, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there." Do you see how there are two great responses to the miracles of Christ? There are those who believe, and there are those who do not believe. May I tell you, those same two groups of people exist today, and you'll have to decide which group you're going to believe, which group you're going to be in. You're either going to be one that says, yes, I believe there is a God. He is a God of all power. He can do anything he wants to, any way he wants to, any time he wants to, and believe in the supernatural power of Christ, or You're going to live in the realm of the natural where everything has to be proven to you. And if I don't see it, I won't believe it. And even these people had seen many things, and they still didn't believe. Isn't that ironic? People say, well, if I could see the miracles they saw, I'd believe. Really? Because the religious people of Jesus' day, they saw the miracles, and still they chose not to believe. You see, in the end, it's a faith matter. You'll have to decide whether he can be trusted or not. I'm here to tell you today to testify from personal experience. You can trust him. Now, before we begin our study, let me leave you with these thoughts today uh, about the miracles. First of all, you're going to see Jesus performing miracles with a variety of people. He's going to perform miracles with Jews and with Gentiles, with men and with women, with old people and with young people, with rich people and with poor people, What would the purpose of that be? Remember, the miracles have a message. God's revealing something. What's he revealing? It is this, that Christ is enough for all people. In in Galatians, it says that in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. What's he saying? Look, in Christ, we all have access to the power of our God. Uh, God is not prejudiced. God loves all people. Christ died for every man, and the Lord wants you, my friend, to know him in power today. So the variety of people reminds us that Christ is enough for everyone. Then there's a variety of places. You'll notice in our study over the next few weeks that the geography keeps changing. Oh, yes, in the same general part of the world where our Christ lived and labored, but he's moving around. The setting is different constantly. What is that? It's a revelation of something. Not only is Christ enough for every person, 
Christ is enough in every place. I don't know where you are today. Maybe you're in a, a beautiful location and life is good. Or maybe you are in a hard place and you're thinking, where is God? Oh, friend, God is everywhere. Remember how did it all begin? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Oh, yes. Not only can a good thing come out of Nazareth, God came through Nazareth. God works in the hard places, in the -the out-of-the-way places, in the places where no one thinks he can work. Christ is enough. And then, not only is there a variety of people and places, there's also a variety of types of miracles. For example, you're going to see his miracles over nature. I mean, the weather listened to him. The fish listened to him. The tree listened to him. And so it should. He's the creator and sustainer of all life. Uh, the, the created world recognized him better than his created people did. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to his own world, and his own people did not receive him. Uh, but he had miracles over nature. He had miracles over disease and sickness of all kinds, from leprosy to blindness to deafness and dumbness and lameness. Then he had victory over death, the ultimate in disease and sickness. Repeatedly, we see him breaking up funeral processions and raising dead people. And, of course, the ultimate in that was not only did he raise others from the dead, but he resurrected himself of his own volition and power. We see his miracle power over demons. The devils knew who he was. They recognized him. Why? Because they knew that the one standing before them was the holy God, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. We see his miracles over every kind of need. What is the message in this? That Christ is enough. He's enough for all people. He's enough in every place. And he is enough in all types of circumstances. And then there's a variety of needs presented. There are physical needs, people whose bodies are hurting. There are material needs, like we need food, we're hungry, that the Lord met. And then there are the ultimate needs, the spiritual needs. Uh, The great need we all have is we need our sins forgiven. We need our eternal destiny changed. We need our relationship with God restored. That's why Christ came to meet that need. Do you see the, the great message in all of the miracles Woven through all the miracles is this one golden thread. And it says this, Christ is enough. He's enough for every person. He's enough in every place. He's enough for every type of circumstance. He's enough for every need you have. Yes, Christ is enough. And I want to say to you what Jesus said to these people in John chapter 10. Will you believe him? Will you believe him for the works that he has performed? Will you believe him for the works that he has performed even in your own life? Can you see God at work in your life? I want to challenge you as we begin our study now to do one of two things. If you've never received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask you today, would you pause where you are and confess your sinfulness to God? Would you confess your inability to save yourself and call on the only one who can save you? And on the authority of the Word of God, I want to tell you, you'll experience God's miracle power today. Oh, I don't mean by that that You'll get a funny feeling all over or have some vision. I mean by that, the grace of God will come into your life and God will give you peace with him and forgiveness and cleansing and eternal life. And friend, that's a miracle. Christ is enough. He will save you. And if you are a believer, as I am, I wonder if you'd join me today in saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to know you better. I want to see and sense and experience more of thy sufficiency in my own life. One thing that ought to grow out of our study of the miracles of Jesus is an increased faith. Not just more information in our head, but more believing God in our hearts. May the Lord teach us the great message of the miracles. Christ is enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the Miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you're making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough.